Everybody. Are you ready for the word? Yes. Are you ready for the word? Yes. So the, the direction that God wants to give you is direction so you don't have to do it twice. Yes. How many found out I'm too old to be doing things twice? Yes. All this trial and error is old school. I need to hit it one time and hit it right. And God is so good that although that may not have been your prayer, but that was on your heart, he will give you the desires of your heart. So it's good to see you here this morning. I am excited about ministering unto you. It feels like you guys got um, spiritual ears this morning. So you're already here on that particular level. So I want to just bypass your regular mind and get to your spiritual mind so that this thing could be what it's really called to be, meat. It's meat, amen. This is not fluff. This is not meringue. This is meat that's going to stick to my bones. If you would, go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, Proverbs 18. We'll be reading verses 15 through 16. Proverbs 18, 15 through 16. We're coming from the New King James Version this morning. Who have it? You're not in the New Testament, are you? <laughs> All right, Proverbs 18. Reverend Evans, you have that read it for us this morning. Proverbs 18, beginning at verse 15 through 16. The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Not him, but his gift. His gift. Even if there's no room in there, the Bible says your gift makes room. It moves stuff out so you can get in. And that's how, how so much God loves you. He said, I put that in you so you can get into places that no one else can get in. That's how unique you are. So your gift will give you preferential treatment. Your, your gift will give you attention. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, for the gathering of the saints. You got us here safe. We want to say thank you. Father, we're here now ready to hear, God. We have set aside, God, things that we had on our mind. We set aside places that we was going to go to come to hear the word that you have for us. There's nothing higher than your word, so we need to seek your word. Your word says the heart of a prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seek knowledge. That is what we do. We come to seek it out. And you say, they that seek shall find. So we say thank you this morning. In the name of Jesus, if you all agree with that prayer, can you say amen? amen. Before you take your seat, look at somebody and say, y'all look good today. Look good today. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Once again, we want to welcome all of our guests that are here this morning. Amen. Uh, we have to park folks down at Wake Tech this morning because y'all just was so vigilant about getting in here. And we do have a contract with Wake Tech that let us park over there. So you won't be told. Praise the Lord. I want to continue from last Sunday's message. A man's gift makes room for him. How many was here last week? How many enjoyed that part one? A man's gift makes room for him. Your gift is your inherited capacity to fulfill a function that meets the needs in creation. In other words, God says, what I give you is just bigger than you. It will meet the need in the world. Somebody's looking for you. Somebody wants to bless you, but they don't know who you are. But God said, when the time is right, that gift that's inside of you, when you mature it, is going to make room for you. No one can give you this gift. You came to the earth with this gift. A gift can never be learned. It can only be refined. <laughs> My assignment this morning is to teach you how, get this now, how to go to the next level of excellence in your gift. Because you don't need to settle for an average lifestyle. Average is the grace in which excellence is buried. And an average person strives to fit in while excellent people strive to stand out. 
You can't hide what's in me. I, at some point, it's going to make room for me. Even you put your foot on me, I'm coming up like a beach ball. You can hold me down, but so long, but my nature is to pop back up. I, I may be down, you may knock me down, because I am coming back up. That's my nature. That's my gift. It's going to make room for me. It's a matter of time, but I have to refine what God has given me. Well, I know we are ministry that operates on excellence. Everything that we do is on excellence. You saw that yesterday. We don't put anything together just to be put some together. We don't put things here to say we're going to have a date. It has to be done in a level of excellence. If it's not done in excellence, we just hold off until you get it in excellence because God promotes excellence. I said God promotes excellence. Operating in the spirit of excellence exemplifies God. If you don't believe me, look what Psalms have to say. Psalms 81, it says, Oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Amen. You see, once you are born again Christian, you must understand that now you are representing God. And how many want to represent God well? Well, let me show you what representing God well really means, okay? Because you want to represent God in your life. You want to represent God well in your lifestyle. You want to represent God well in your body, in your family, in your business. You want to represent God well in everything that you do and then in everything that you have. The home God gave you. Make sure you operate that home in excellence. You don't drop your clothes on the floor and walk over them. What kind of spirit is that? I'm already in your business. I'm already in your business. I ain't, I ain't exegeting text yet. I'm just dropping nuggets. How, how can you say you operate in, in excellence and you, and you drop your underwear on the floor and walk over in two days? How can you drop your shirt on the floor and walk over the whole week? What kind of spirit is that? when it only takes 30 more seconds for you to pick it on up, hang it up, and put it into your closet. You need to represent God well in everything that you do. Lord, the home you gave me, I'm going to operate that well. Yes, the grass is cut. Yes, the hedges are trimmed. No, there are no weeds in the yard. I, I'm going to pay somebody that has a gift in that area to take care of weeds. I will seek you out. I will Google you because you got a gift in taking care of weeds. Your gift makes room. And bring before great men. Just being green ain't good enough. Lord, I want to represent you well in everything I do. Can I tell you a secret? If God gave you the house, he will give you the provisions so that you can represent him on a high level if he gave you the house. Yeah. Don't sign up for a higher level of blessing when you don't have a higher level of commitment. Too much is given, much is required. It comes with the territory. If you got an ability to have a photogenic merit, it, it comes with a responsibility. Hey, Amen. You can't be like everybody else if you have that gift. Hey, God is calling you high. Represent him well in everything that you do. God gives the people, get this, that he can trust. So the question this morning, can God trust you? You see, God can trust you when he sees consistency. <laughs> when he sees consistency, then that puts you on the map of God. And when you deal with excellence, it's all about diligence. It's all about discipline. It's about consistency. And watch this right now, because consistency is about what you keep doing no matter what. I'm consistent. No, it's raining, yeah, but that don't stop me. I'm still going to be consistent. Okay, let me just talk to somebody, you know, that you done bought a whole membership. You know, you, you got caught up in the spirit somewhere and bought a whole membership. Yeah, and you was excited about it for 24 hours. You were excited about it until you went to the gym and got on the treadmill and said, this ain't for me. <laughs> Consistency is about you keep doing no matter what because there are some things that you have to continue to do in order to make it to the next level. You see, God has to know that you're going to keep doing it. Why? Before he take you there. 
And when you get direction, now you can resist distractions. See, I can't, I can't resist if I don't have no direction. But now that I know I have direction, I don't got time for all this other stuff, amen, because it will delay me. It will distract me. I, I got to get my stuff together in order to be at the right place at the right time because God set an appointment up for me. I cannot miss what God has. Some of you don't understand. You had a divine appointment to be here. You just didn't stumble here. You was not just invited here. God had an appointment before we was even born. He said on September the 8th, 2024, you will be in Raleigh North Christian Center. I know you had plans to be in Bahamas, but no, no, you're going to be at Raleigh North Christian Center because I got a word, not just any word, a word that's going to change your life, a word that's going to elevate your life, and once you see that, it makes room for you. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Now, understand God has bestowed on all of us gifts. Whether you believe that or not, he bestowed on all of us gifts. And your success depends on you using your gift. And you have the ability, the intrinsic value, a gift within you that can bless you and bless the kingdom. I'm going to bless you to be a blessing to the kingdom. I want to give you the Abraham blessing. I just don't want to bless you. I want you to be a blessing to other people. I'm not just blessing you so you can floss and you can do this. No, I'm blessing you that you can bless other people. And when you start blessing other people, you move my kingdom. And I don't preach church. I preach kingdom. And the kingdom of heaven is like, it's always the kingdom of heaven. And the reason why some of you don't have, you know, um, the, the, the push you need to have as a religious person because you're about church and you're not about kingdom. Now, church hurts you. Church, church can kill you. Church can offend you. But, but when you operate in the kingdom, you're dead. Oh, let me talk to this side. When I'm dead, I don't got no feelings. I, see, somebody said, I got offended in the church, but I thought you had died to Christ. They hurt my feelings because they didn't sit me on the left side of the church and the right side. Die! <laughs> got to die to your flesh, die to yourself. Uh, it's not about you. It's about other people. He said, if you can bless other people, I'll bless you. If you can bless my house, I'll bless your house. If you can bless my son, I'll bless your son. My gift, my gift makes room for you and bring me for great people. So you need to discover these gifts and start using them in your everyday lifestyle. Now, your gift make room for you in the world. Not your education. I'm going to talk about it a little later because education has its place. But it's not your education that makes room for you. <laughs> uh, how many of you know some people that's got some degrees but still broke? Oh, you don't know nobody? Okay, I, I know plenty. I, I know plenty. I know plenty got double degree and guess ain't got no job. So obviously, the degree wasn't the key to success. So are you putting so much energy in that to only find out I went four years and don't, I'm not even working in my gift? Oh, that wasn't your gift then. That's why you don't want to get up and go to work in the morning because it's not your gift. <laughs> Yeah, your gift is your natural talent that God gave you in certain areas. And once you identify that, then your whole life changed. And then God can take you to new heights and God can give you peace. And then he can give you joy. See, when you wake up in the morning and you can't, you can't wait to go to work. Who am I talking to? Two people. I need to talk to somebody. So I just can't wait. Guess what? I don't even need an alarm clock. I am excited. I am to get the word. See, when you have that right there, that's a gift right there because, see, a gift is not work. It's what I do. It's, it's automatic. It's what makes me feel complete. It's what gives me the joy that I have. It's my gift. It's making room for me. See, when you know what your gift is, it will enable you to fulfill your vision. And until you live in your gift, you cannot be complete. Now, you can fake other people out and pretend you're complete, but you are not complete if you're not operating in the vision that God has given you. That's why you try to imitate other people. 
That's why you can't stay on social media because you want to know what Hollywood is doing and what your favorite celebrity is doing. I don't got time to be a man scrolling you. My life is too important. It's too big. I got too many things to do. I see you, but guess what? I don't know. I don't care about what you eat and what kind of coffee you're drinking and if you love dogs too. I don't got time for that. I see you when I see you. I'm too busy for that. I got a job to do. I got other visions to fulfill. Yeah. It's your gift that is the key to your success. It's your gift that create opportunities for you. It's your gift that create positions for you. Your gift is so power, it will e even make a way in your life. So you need to find out what your gift is, and that begins with God. Go to God and talk to him and ask him, why did you create me? Uh, what's so uniquely distinctive about me? I don't see anything like that in me, Lord. Lord, show me my gift before I go up against my Goliath. Show me my slingshot so I know how to use what you have given me. Lord, show me so that I can work it, and I know if I can work it, it'll change my whole life. Like, it makes no difference what your gift is. It may be a painter. It may be a nurse. It may be a teacher. It may be a mechanic. It may be a makeup artist. It makes no difference what your gift is. A salesperson gift is in their mouth. A massage therapist gift is in their hands. A comedian gift is in their jokes. So it makes no difference what your gift is if you can work it. Somebody say, if I can work it. If I can work it, it's going to change my whole life. And your gift is the thing that you do with absolutely no, get this, it doesn't take no effort at all. That's your gift. Identify your gift because that is really what you need to be doing. So stop trying to be something you're not gifted for. You didn't hear that because I got a lot of people. You were taking too many scopeless notes. Yeah, your gift. Somebody's trying to find what it is already because they'll pay for it. I tell you, I don't, I don't cut my grass. Thank the Lord, I don't do that anymore. But, but I'm not gifted for, for weeds. I don't got the patience for it. It irritates me. I'm like, I didn't water you. I didn't take care of you. Matter of fact, I threw a few fire ants over there just to see if you can just eat up the roots. And, and I need somebody that, that's gifted. You come out there with taints. You come out there with hoses. You got, you got hazmat suits on, amen. You love this. There is a gift inside of you just like that and because you have not identified it you have not skilled it yet and because you have not skilled it yet then God cannot promote you yet it is not that God said it's not your time no but you're wasting time you are so busy hanging out with other people trying to figure out what they're doing what schools that they're going to what promotion they're going to what concerts they're going to oh who, 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 who got Gucci's on who got Louis Vuitton's on who got this on you're so busy about all of that you are not even concerned about your own gift no wonder it has has not made room for you yet. How old? How old you want to be? <laughs> Your gift. Identify it. Why are you trying to work on somebody's teeth <laughs> when you should be working on somebody's car? You got mechanic tools all in the dentist shop. No wonder you're breaking folks' jaws and teeth coming out. That ain't your gift. You like big tools. You, you don't like no fine little tweezer kind of. I don't know. Help somebody identify your gift. <laughs> mm. You have to recognize I'm not good at this. That's hard sometimes, isn't it? That's hard because a lot of you think it's your passion and you go after your passion. But I know a lot of people that have a passion to sing, can't sing. I don't know about you. You, got, you get up every day singing all in the bathroom, walking down the hallway, stealing your PJ, you're singing, you love it, it's your passion, but you can't sing. And somebody need to tell you before you waste a lot of money and go American Idol and get voted down. 
passion. It's not your gift. Yeah, you got passion for it. Because <laughs> you're wasting your time. Somebody needs to share this with you so you don't spend money on this. <laughs> the Bible does not mention you pursuing your passion. The Bible mentions you pursuing your gift. Who told you about passion has its place, but it's not the barometer. So, see, you can be passionate about golf. Can't golf a lick. I mean, can't golf, can't putt to, to here to there, right there. But you got to pass you up there every week paying about $100. Some say, I got a passion for cooking. I just love to cook. Look, can't cook. You can't cook, can't boil water. <laughs> you, and you know it. <laughs> Amen. But you got a passion for it. Somebody need to tell you you can't cook. <laughs> oh, I got a passion for cleaning my house. Yeah, that's about as far as it's going to go, your house, because it can't go no further. You don't know what Ajax is from turpentine. You don't know. <laughs> what is McGill? What is my gift? The Bible says nothing about pursuing passion. The Bible says pursue your gift and it's going to make room for you and then it's going to bring you for a great man. He said, I got great men waiting for you. See, you're trying to put yourself in front of a great man. I already tell you it's going to be your gift. They're not going to recognize you when you come if you don't come with a gift. Mm. Oh. The Bible's mentioned you pursue... The Bible does not even mention you pursuing education. <clears throat> and how many know education is critical? Amen. How many know that it's very, very important? How many know you must be well-read, well-versed? There's no way around that most of it in this um, technology age. But that is not the most important thing in your life. Somebody doesn't do you. Education is not the key to success. Do you know what the Bible mentions as the key to success? It is your faith, your gift, and your work ethic. He said, now that's going to make some room for you right there. If I, if I can just find you coming in on time every day and you don't got no excuses. How many times are you going to use a dog, hey amen, hey, the homework? How many times are you going to use it? How many times are you going to use it? I got a flat tire. Somebody got some hard toe shoes on because I'm, I'm trying to step hard. I'm trying to say, but y'all keep, you know, shielding me right now. That's why I keep looking at this side because this is a stoic side here today. I don't know what happened. I don't know if you didn't have no breakfast today. I don't know. Hey, Amen. The orange juice was, was, was tainted. I don't know. But can y'all just smile for me? Can you just do me a test run? Just smile for me. Let me know you're out there so I can look at you and preach to you. Hey, Amen. Instead of looking at this side right here because y'all had some good breakfast. I know y'all had some breakfast right now. Hey, Amen. I just need somebody to help the preacher out this morning just a little bit. I ain't going to keep you long. I'm going to go. Uh, <laughs> How many know that God created everything, everything with a gift in it? The gift of a bird is to fly. If he don't fly, he's not a success because the gift was in him. The gift of a fish is to swim. If he does not swim, then he's not a success. You can do anything else, but if you don't do those two things, then you're not a success. Hmm. Notice birds don't attend flight school. Why? It's a natural gift. Birds are born. They're born. Was it in them? Oh, yeah. Fish don't go to swimming schools, although they go. They swim in schools, but they don't go to school. Tweet that one. I'll give you, I'll give you authority. Yeah. <laughs> I got to watch my son and my wife because they be giving me the okay, the no okay, the this right here. They be doing all that kind of stuff. That's why I like them on the front row right here so y'all don't see that. Y'all don't see that. So they tone me down because I want to I wanna step on the gas right now. Can I hit it right now? Uh, uh, I, I got a car, you know, and, and, and it says it can go 260. I don't know if it can go 260, but I, I tried, okay? So... <laughs> All right, all right. So God created everything, watch this, with a specific gift. 
Okay. So when you start studying the life of David, we see that he had many gifts. And that's the problem with some of us because we have many gifts. We are multi-talent. We can do a lot of things. And that is well. But you must understand what is the dominant gift. What is the major gift? Because if you don't seek that one out, you can be doing something that you're good at but not great at. And when you do something that you're good at and not great at, it sabotages you because you can never be who God really called you to be because you're good at it. David was a worship leader. He had gifts. David, amen, was a great leader. He was a songwriter. He, he built instruments and played instruments, amen. But he had many gifts, but that was not his primary gift, amen, that unlocked the many gifts. It was one thing above everything that brought him before great men. He had the ability to take a slingshot and hit things with a, such an accuracy eh, that it caused people to stop and say, what in the world is this? That you can hit something with such accuracy and such philosophy. Uh, that you can take out something. And that is what brought him before the king. It wasn't his songwriting. It wasn't his poem writing. It wasn't his history making. It wasn't his singing. It was his ability, amen, to throw rocks. What is your gift this morning? Because it may be something so small you're looking over it. Trying to find the big ticket. But it's going to be that one thing that's going to bring you for the great men. And once it be for great men, they're going to use what they see. And they're going to pay you handsomely. So when you look at your life, I want you to notice, amen, it's the gift that God anoints for you to use. Now, it's not the gift you have. It's the one he anoints. When you do that, it changes the atmosphere. When you walk in the room, it changes the whole atmosphere because there's something in me that the enemy sees. See, the Bible says when they come to, to arrest Jesus when he was there, the Bible says that they did not even know who he was. So, it, so he wasn't a good-looking guy. He wasn't that handsome. Amen. It was the handsome guy over there. They didn't know who he was. He had to be identified. And when they got to him, they said, we're looking for Jesus, who he is. And the Bible said he had to step forward out of the fog. Here I am. And when he said, here I am, the anointing was on him so strong that all the enemies had to, fl had, they just flung back by a force they could not see because his gift made room for him. Uh, it's, it's, it's the gift that God anoints you to have. That's the one right there. I could do many things. I have made a lot of money over my day doing great things, but I'm, I mean good things, but it was never, never my primary gift. But when I took a mic, although I didn't know how to talk right, although I split verbs and had, and had dangling particles and it didn't know nothing like that, but when I got behind the mic, something happened with broken English, not even knowing all the Bible, because it wasn't based on me. I just decided to use the little bit that I have, and the little bit I have, he magnified it, and folks were getting saved on the streets and they were getting saved in the parks and they were getting saved in the homeless shelter because God said I want to take your gift and bring it before a great man and now I'm preaching over three million a year because my gift has made room and somebody's looking over something simple because you're looking for the big ticket and everybody don't have the big ticket it's the small stuff it's your ability to cook, God Almighty. That's going to bring for great people. You can fry chicken like nobody can fry chicken. God Almighty. Yeah, they use leaven, herbs, and spices, but you don't need all that. Well, you got three, and guess what? They come banging on your door. You making gumbo on the back of your porch, amen. Amen. Somebody want to buy. You don't hear me. How you think Sarah Lee got her? <laughs> How do you think she got her start selling pies and cakes? Because somebody said, I like that right there, but I'm still in my home. I'm still doing it for, for fun. But no, we like this, and we're going to pay you for it. And now we're going to put your pies in all of the, um, the, the grocery stores in America. Matter of fact, can we just take it international? And she said, yes, and now uh, uh, a billionaire. Yeah. Baking. What is your excuse this morning? Uh, what is your excuse? Stop trying to be good at what you're not good at. 
I learned a long time ago I wasn't good at math. I just learned a long time ago. Although they always put me in advanced class. I don't know why y'all put me in these advanced classes, okay? I'm wasting money up in here. I could do it, but it wasn't my gift. I hated to go to class. I tried to cheat a few times. Dear, you know what I'm talking about? I didn't need somebody to got a cheating spirit. That's only somebody. I need to talk to somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm like, write the answers on the desk so when I come in on the next period, I know what A is. I need to help somebody. Somebody say, I ain't have no gift in math. I did not have it. But my gift makes room for it. <laughs> Quit working on what you're not good at. I got to bring this C up. I got to bring this C up. When you're good at an A over here, but you keep working on the C, who am I talking to? And you're doing everything in your possible to bring the C up, and the best you can do is a, is a C plus. You can't go no higher. Stop. Work on the gift. What's, what, what I'm good at? I, that's what's going to bring me before a great man. I got to find that. Then I got to identify that. Then I got to refine that. I got to take it to the next level, a level of excellence. He's called me to go to, not stay where I am, but go to the next level because it's going to make room for you and it's going to be your income. The reason why some of you are broke right now is not your gift. You went to school for it, but it's not your gift. You invested in it, but it's not your gift. Now, when are you going to make a U-turn and say, now what? You know what? I'm tired of going from paycheck to paycheck with two degrees. Yeah. When, when are you going to find out that's not my thing? I'm going a little deep if y'all can hang with me. Can you hang with me? I got about 20 more uh, minutes of air, so adjust your air takes for 20 more minutes. I, I'm not going to kill you, but we're going to go down 20 more minutes. Can you go down there? Amen. We're not going in shallow water. We got to go in some deep water right now. So adjust your ear pressure. Mm. Once you know what the gift is, then you have to understand how to operate in that gift. Now watch this. When God got ready to use Moses to deliver the people, now watch this, he led him to the backside of the desert. So the very first thing, somebody say very first. The very first thing God did was delete distractions from his life. That's the first thing he has to do with you. He has to remove distractions from your life. And God started deleting people from his life. He led Moses to the place where he didn't have to compare himself to nobody but him. Yeah, no, I ain't got to compete with you. I don't got to look at you. I don't got to be intimidated by you. He's going to lead me to a place where I don't have to compare myself to nobody. He's going to start deleting friends out of my life. And when he start deleting friends out of your life, don't you go back and try to add them back in there. Have anybody ever tried to go back and connect with a college friend, connect with a high school friend? Y'all was boys. Y'all was girls. Y'all did it, amen, like nobody's business. But when you try to connect, neck, the timing was gone, the thrill is gone, something was missing. Those are signs. You once was good in my life at one season, and we had a ball, and we had a great time, but where I'm at in my life right now, oh, oh, there, there's no room. There's no room for that anymore. And God said, the first thing, Moses, I got to do for you, I got to remove this riffraff of our people that keep hanging around. They, they keep wanting to kill you. Every time you want to come up, Moses, they talk bad about you. I ain't got no talk bad folks from here, do I? I ain't got no tail bearers in here, do I? Let me go check the bathroom, amen, right now, see who's prophesying to one of my members. <laughs> All that prophesying, tell you what, thus saith the Lord in the bathroom, out in the parking lot. Won't dare do it in here because you know you ain't got the gift. But trying to fake somebody out by trying to tell the Lord gave me a word for you. The Lord didn't give you no word for you. Uh, Oh, yeah, no, he gave you a word. Stay out of my business. Look at somebody, the first thing God does uh, when he wants to bring you before a great man, uh, he, he must delete distractions out of your life. Now watch this. He led him to a place where there was a little distractions, and then the Lord said to Moses, before I teach you your gift, I must show you my power. 
Uh, Exodus chapter 4. Can I tell you about it? Verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, And God told Moses to stick his hand in his shirt. He said, I'm going to show you how, how powerful I am, Moses. Stick your hands in your shirt. And then God said, Now, Moses, take your hands out of your shirt. And when he took his hands out of his shirt, the Bible says his hand was white as leprosy. It was diseased, amen. And then the Lord said, now put your hand back into your shirt. And when he took his hand back out of his shirt, his hand was healed and smooth. And here's what the Lord was saying to Moses. Before I teach you your gift, I'm going to show you my power. I'm going to show you how strong I am. So when I see me for a great man, you won't be concerned or worried or anxious that I'm going to come through for you. Then in verse 3, watch this in verse 3. The Lord told Moses to throw his rod down. Throw it to the ground. And when he threw it to the ground, the Bible said it turned into a snake. It turned into a king cope. And Moses ran from it. Ooh, do I have anybody in here who's running from their gift? He ran from his gift. And the Lord says, before I can promote you, amen, I got to show you how to use what's in your hands. And I can need to help to stop somebody right there because, amen, there's something in your hands that God wants to multiply. The biggest it can be is only in your hands. The biggest it can be is only in your mind. But when you put that thing down on paper, he said, now give me that idea and I will blow it up. Give me the two pennies and I'll blow it up. Give me the little oil, I'll blow it up. Give me what you have. I blow it up. God want to take somebody's mind and turn it into a book. He said, but I can't bless it because it's not on paper yet. I need somebody to start writing right now. It's in you. He deleted people away from it so you can write. Ooh. Moses, before I show you what your gift is, I'm going to show you my power. Oh. And the Lord told Moses, get back over there and pick up your gift. And the Lord said to Moses, don't be afraid of it. And Moses picked it up and then it turned back into a rod again. Do you know what God was doing? He was showing Moses how to use his gift. Uh, you keep running from it. No, no. Pick it up and use it. Don't be afraid of it. Pick it up and use it. God showed Moses his gift while he was on the backside of the desert. He showed him his gift when he's in a small stage of his life. And once he learned how to operate it, then God said, I'm going to bring me for a great man. I can't even bring me for the Pharaoh looking like that, acting like that. You're running from stuff. You ain't met real trouble yet. You are running from a stick. Because that's all it is. <laughs> but when my hands get on, it turns into something that is not. Oh, let's go, let's go a little deeper here. Now, Moses, I'm not going to bring you before great men until you practice your gift. Men and women of God, God is not going to bring me before great people until you refine your gift. And when you have refined your gift, then God places you into an environment, watch this, where somebody needs what you have. In other words, God will not expose you until he refines you. So you have to have this this competent area, this, this, just in one area, this very, very competent, excellent in one area. Excellence is going to make room for you. Somebody say that excellence makes room for me. Most people fail because they are general practitioners. Yeah, yeah. They, they can do everything, God Almighty, but do nothing well. Yeah, and that's how you lived your life. You got so many gifts, you're just using all of them, but there's nothing that you specialize in. Uh, give me my glasses right there. So you must be skilled in gifts in order to qualify for great people. Yeah. I didn't start getting invitations until I was skilled. Oh, you hear me? 
I don't think you really want to hear it because I'm, try I'm trying to go down your road. You will never be summoned until you refine what you got. I'm waiting on you, Lord. No, I'm waiting on you. How many times I got to tell you to go back to school? Oh, that was for the side. How many times I tell you to go back to school and you keep telling me you don't got time? Or do I need to delete people out of your life so you can have time? Because I said before, you can go before great men. You got to relearn some things because guess what? You were doing attorney in 1991, but 2024 now. They got new stuff on the books. New cases, amen, you got to identify with. I'm trying to help somebody, amen, start operating in a spirit of excellence, amen. God said, I will not expose you until I refine you. If you're going to be the salt of the earth, then mingle. Who told you to mingle with Christians? Who said some people you supposed to be hanging with? The salt do not need to be salted. Oh, he said, I, if, I, if, you, if you're going to be the salt, you need to salt somebody that's bland, somebody that's cussing, somebody that's acting a fool. Amen. You go hang with them. Now, if you can, amen, have an impact on them, then you are moving the kingdom. But when you can go with a prayer meeting with somebody you've been doing for five years and both y'all is still not delivered, then, then leave that alone. Just leave that alone. Amen. God didn't mingle. Well, the Bible said don't be unequally yoked. That's talking about relationship. You ain't following that one. I said, you ain't following that one. Then you won't get real spiritual, amen, when God start, amen, trying to take you to the next level. I need to help somebody. Can that side help me over there? Come on, my gift going to make room for you and bring me for a great man. I got to refine this thing. Yeah, yeah, see? I don't cook. My wife think I can't cook. I don't have to cook. Somebody say amen. Uh, since you love to cook, amen, and you don't got a problem cooking, then that's your job. She said, you don't know where the spoon, forks, plates, nothing in the kitchen. And you put the pots up and you put the stuff and still don't know where it's at. I don't have a passion for it. You love it. And because you loved it, you skilled it over the years. And now you don't need measuring tools. All oh, you know what a pinch is. Somebody know, what a, somebody know what a pinch is, amen. Oh, I need somebody to know what a pinch is. Hey, you ain't got no measuring tools. There's a, there's a pinch of this. And what's the other little thing they used to say? The little country saying, a, a, a smidgen. That's right. What, what's a smidgen? But, but somebody know what a smidgen is. And, and you can make the best pie because you know what a smidgen is. And somebody got a whole measuring cup and then killing the peanut butter cookies. <laughs> make a difference in the kitchen, please. Make a difference. We want to come back and eat this food. Oh, my God. You know, you got to call me twice for dinner. Hey, man, I smell it in the back room. It's time to eat. Hey, Amen. Where you want to eat right there where the food is at? <laughs> Y'all getting anything out of this mess? All right. So we're going to mingle, right? We're going to mingle with other people. I, I didn't say do what they do. I said mingle. Make a difference. I said make a difference. See, your testimony is strong when you can get into an environment and don't sin. No, see, they want to talk about, amen, pieces and herbs. I'm, I'm trying to take something a little higher right now. <laughs> amen. It's not going to kill you to mingle. Who told you that? If your Christianity is that weak, that you cannot fraternize, amen, with the enemy, and still don't come out and still come out clean, then what, what, what worth is your Christianity? No, when I go into room, I am called to affect the whole atmosphere, everything in the room, save, unsaved, Wish, Dr. Sherlock Holmes, all of them. I affect all of it when I go in the room, not because I'm greater, but my gift is making room for me. My gift didn't come on the scene until I got into the room. I'm trying to show somebody. It did not even come up until I got into the atmosphere where it was assigned to be. See, the reason why some of you will never get fired because you're too valuable. And you don't know you're valuable yet. <laughs> but they will never fire you. And as soon as you say you, you're going to walk out, they up your pay. If you want to raise, don't try it. Just try it if you know you're gifted. <laughs> if you know you're gifted, go in there tomorrow morning and say, you know what? I know my worth here. If you know you're gifted. I tried to walk away from a job. Tried to walk away from the job. Told my wife, I'm tired.
tired of this job. I'm tired of these people on this job. They vex my spirit. <laughs> my wife has always been the woman that says, you know, what do you want to do, honey? What do you want to do? She never told me no, no. She only told me no when I tried to sell ties out of the back of my trunk one time. <laughs> and now look at you. Just look at you. <laughs> all handsome and all kind of stuff, and you trying to sell ties <laughs> your trunk. Don't even look right. <laughs> That's the only time I remember her telling me, you can come to your senses, sir. That ain't your gift selling time. <laughs> All that BP talking about, come on here, brother. I got a striped tie for you that'll match that suit. <laughs> no, no. See, the gift was in the talking. The gift was in the salesmanship. Mm. Oh, huh. Talk to somebody. Elevate somebody. Bring somebody high. You got the gift. It's not in ties. It's in souls. Mm. Quit being a general practitioner. <laughs> make a difference. Make a difference in those that are angry in the world. Hey, if you got the juice, go get up to them. Walk up to the, to the one raging war out there on, the, out there on 540 because you cut them off. Hey, Amen. See if you got the gift to calm them down. You're talking about you're going to calm the whole office down. No, calm them down. If you got the juice. Oh, your, your gift makes room for you. Make a difference in those that don't know Christ. If you're going to be the salt of the earth, you're going to have to mingle. Somebody say, I got to mingle. That's why some of you struggle with self-esteem issues because the devil don't want you to know what you're gifted at. So he keeps telling you, you're to this and you're to that. Because as long as he can get you not to know you're gifted, then you cannot use it. And if you don't use the gift, you'll never be brought before a great man. After God told Moses to practice his gift, watch this. Then Moses walked before the face of Pharaoh and said, let my people go. And here's what you didn't read. If you don't, I'm going to show you what's going to happen. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help you out, Pharaoh. If you don't let them go, they're going to be hell now. You, you, you're going to see some stuff you have never, ever seen in your whole entire life if you don't let my people go. Mm. Moses had so much confidence. Do you know why? He'd been practicing his gift. See, before he didn't know what to do with his gift, but he'd been practicing his gift for 40 years. On the backside of the devil, by now you should know how to play jack rocks. You should know how to play marbles by now, 40 years. He's skilled. And when you're skilled, you got confidence. And you can walk before great people and say, now let my people go, because if you don't, something's about to go down, Pharaoh. I know you think you God and all that, but you ain't seen God yet. Ooh. For every area of restriction in your life, for Every area and where you are struggling, there's a lack of you operating in your gift. And the reason you are not getting much flow in your life is because something has restricted the flow in your life. God says, I heard the prayer. When I heard the prayer, I turned the faucet on full blast. Everything that you said, I am sending down the pipe. The problem is, once they get to a certain area on your side, the hose is kink and all you get is a drip of what I have already assigned for you. If you can just remove the kink in the holes, then you can get full blast of the power. I need to help somebody. Stop talking about people. It's kinking your holes. All on social media. I mean, you are a social media gangster. You can fuss out the best on social media. Hey, man, you are a phone gangster. And you can cuss somebody out with the best of them. But when you stand before them, you are a church mouse. Need somebody to understand. Hey, man. Uh, I'm just trying to deliver a few of you right now. <laughs> if you can find your gift, it's going to make room for you and open you up, excuse me, open up what was shut. That's what I want. 
what, what's shut in front of me? Lord, open it up because I tried what I can do and I can't open it up, but you can open it up. And you must recognize that you're gifted to do and, and the reason why you're grieved over what you do because you're not gifted at it and you cannot fight in somebody else's armor. And you cannot use somebody else's talent. Uh, they try to put David, little David in King Saul's armor. David, this is what I fight. This is what the king fight in, but it was too big. It was just too much for him. And he says, take all this stuff. It's too big. I can't see. I can't run. Give me what I'm gifted at. What you gifted? Give me that slingshot over there. I'm going to show you how gifted I am. You got to understand, when David went for Goliath, the whole army of Israel was afraid of just one man. You got to understand this right now. David was not a skilled leader at this time. He was still a teenager, but he had skilled his gifts so much that when lions came to attack the flock, he killed and the Bible says he killed them. We talking about a boy. Have you ever seen a lion for real? I'm not. I'm not talking about a kitty cat. I'm talking about a real lion. Have you ever went to the? I mean, I'm talking about. I've been over to South Africa. I'm talking about out in the wild. I'm not talking about some Asheville Zoo. I'm talking about something in the wild. Hey man, when you when they walk up to the side of the vehicle, man, they are already up here. I mean, I'm six feet tall. They already up here. This is the back. And David kills a lion that comes and mess with the flock, and he killed bears with his hands. He was skilled. He was a natural born killer. Oh, see, y'all won't get religious with me. The man was gifted in killing. And the killing brought him before the king. Oh. Y'all got to remember something. The reason why the Bible says that the women were saying Saul has killed his thousand and, and David his 10,000, because the Bible says when David went out to war, he loved to cut stuff. Yes, sir. I need somebody to know the scriptures. Yes, sir. He loved to cut stuff, and he went out to war, and the Bible says not only did he, you know, maim them, but he would bring them down and, and cut the private parts off. And he come into the palace, and the king said, what you got? And he had a whole crate. <laughs> I want to talk to the pretty people back here, because y'all, I can't see y'all too good. What you got for me? I got a whole crate. He was a killer, and that was his gift. You got to learn how to be a killer in your gift. You got to learn that nobody going to mess with you when you're at your best. Nobody can even compete with you at your best. I slow, I slew everything in my path. I'm gifted. He was gifted in killing, and that's what brought him before a great man. Y'all think it was his, his, his uh, praise leadership. Uh -huh. What you skill at, killing? Any more questions? There's no need you reading the resume no more. There's no need you going down there. I kill stuff real good. If you need somebody killed, that's what I do. I am a natural born killer. <laughs> Trying to help somebody understand, your gift may seem so small, so insignificant, but that is what's going to bring you before great people, and that's what's going to keep you before great people. I was telling somebody, I said, I don't know if I'm going to do part three of this message because, you know, I'm kind of tired of it, but... Uh, <laughs> I do got a whole lot more to say, you know, on the, on, on, on the gift because last week we were talking about, you know, your gift make room for you. This week we're talking about learn how to operate the gift that we have. And, and, I, and maybe next week I think I'm going to talk about how to feed that gift. What, what do it take? Uh, now that I know, hmm, now that I know what the gift is, can you help me, amen, feed the gift that I got? Because if I, if I don't feed it, it dies. <laughs> Y'all want to hear that? Yeah. I got 10 people. Okay, that ain't good. I ain't <laughs> Somebody said, I can't fight in somebody else's armor. So, Lord, show me. Show me what you gave me because the moment I see my gift, it does make room for me. Uh, it's hot up here. Moses' gift was so powerful that it made room for him. Look at this. Not the man. It didn't make room for the man. But his gift brought him before the king. Now, let's look more at this right now. Okay, watch this now. A man's gift makes room for him. What does his gift make room for? 
Okay. Now, the Bible answers and says it makes room for the world. Meaning the world, the system. Watch this now. It's the system. It, it makes room in the system. God about it of the world. See, the system want to lock us out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, the, the system want to tell you how far you can go. See, the system want to stop you from promotion. It's the systems that want to that want to stamp you out of advancement. It's the system that hinders you. It's the system that even tell you when to retire. But according to the scripture, a man gift makes room in and bring him before great men, and your gift ignores the system. You hear what I said? Your gift ignores everybody, even the guy who hates you. Can I to preach Bible? Even the guy that hates you, he said, I'll, I'll turn him around and cause him to bless you. Oh, I cause him to turn around and write you a nice big fat check. I cause them to promote you in their department and don't even like you. Uh, no, no, I don't, your gift does not, amen, care about what somebody else has said. It's just gonna make, it's just gonna make, it's gonna move, it's gonna move somebody out and put you in. See, when people call me to come preach or teach, you know what they really want? My gift. I've learned, you know what? I'm not going to somebody else's church and preach this and preach that. You know, I'm preach what I'm good at. And when I started doing that, they said, can you, I want you to preach on this. And that was easy for me. Preach on that. <laughs> That's good. Your gift is so powerful, even your enemies will come and pay for it. Yeah, yeah, they will. So they, 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 might, they may not even like you. Excuse me for this, this drink. Hot up here. Excuse me. They might not even like you. They may be jealous of you. But they want what you have. Can I just take you further, really? Listen, a man's gift make room for you and bring forth a great man. Now, now, why would God allow your gift to bring before a great man. Why do you want me to go before a great man? Watch this now. He says, I want you to stand before great men so, they, so you can model after them. Stay with me. So you can stare at them. So you can glean from them. Oh, uh, so I, I, want, I want them to mentor you. Uh, you were raw at what you do, and, you, and you're pretty good, but you're still not as where you need to be. So I'm going to bring you for great men so you can stare at them, watch them, glean from them. Amen. Uh, be trained by them. Be taught by them. Be educated by them. Because God never asked anyone to build anything without a pattern. God will expose you to greatness so you can stare at it. Model after it so that you can have a pattern because you're up next. Wouldn't it be a shame when you're up next and you're not ready? This is a softball game and you got your kickball sneakers on. Uh, the wrong game. You're good at it, but it's the wrong game. When God want to promote you, it wouldn't it be a shame and you're not ready? So you're going to bring you for a great man for what? So you can see it. So you can see how they did it. So you can see how they responded. So you can see how they didn't respond. So you can see how they walked into it. Don't be exposed to greatness only to produce weakness. Don't be exposed to better and con contaminate it with lesser. You're giving, bring you before a great man. As I close, but your gift cannot keep you there. It has to be skilled, has to be trained, has to be educated, has to be refined. And God has brought you before great people. Are you allowing them to train you? Or are you trying to do your own thing without the skill, without being taught it yet? The reason why you're on that nine to five, not for you to stay there for life long, but to learn. Learn this thing because one day you're going to be doing this thing. 
the, the reason why I want to leave that job I was telling you about, I couldn't stand the people on the job, you know, all of this right now, because guess what? God was refining me, and I ain't like it. When you're used to things that's happening your way and falling your way all the time, you get used to that lifestyle. But when God want to train you, he'll send a little adversity into your life, amen, to, to make you say, do you really want this? Do you really want this? And another reason he sent adversity, man, he's trying to weed out imposters. He's trying to weed out all those that are trying to slip on in there without paying the dues. But the same place I tried to leave, tried to quit, wanted to quit, was eventually my company. Oh, you didn't hear me. I was trying to run from my own company, but I didn't know I'm a company yet. I just knew I guess they just got on my nerves over there. But it came a point where God said, the reason why I got you on this nine to five, you learn everything you need to. Learn how to project manage, learn how to skill, learn how to order materials, learn how to get the job force together. Why you want me to do all this, Lord? I want to go back to hourly. I don't, I'm tired of this management. I made more money hourly. You want me to go to management? I'm trying to help somebody right now. It's not about the money right now. It's just a little season. Because when he turned the whole thing around, he's going to give you all of it if you're ready for it. Uh, uh, don't produce less. Don't produce less, amen. We're supposed to be do, producing on a greater level. Refine it. Train it. Skill it. And once you do that, he's going to bring you before the people. And the reason why some of you have missed your opportunity because you took the person who should have been mentoring you as a normal person and not as a God-sent person. Because you said out of your own mouth, he put his pants on just like me. He put his shoes on just like me. Me, He's nobody special. So you never allow yourself to be close to the training that you needed to operate on. Mm. And because you missed that training, you had to stay back. Because you love to move. Can I talk to somebody? You are almost a professional church hopper. You got no intention to stand somewhere. I'm good. As soon as they get comfortable with you, you out of there. No accountability. But that spirit stops today. It stops today. Sit down and be trained. Learn. Learn how to treat somebody nice. Learn how to keep your mouth closed. No, no, I know you got the skilled tongue, but keep it closed. I know you know the answer. Keep it closed. No, no. He that answer a matter before it's answered is not why. Are you being trained? In other words, when the opportunity was given to you, did you take it or just pass it by? So you must understand what you shape out of your life is a direct result of what was modeled in front of you. The reason why some of us are jacked up right now because the model we saw growing up was not the best model. And although we are grown, we think we have shaken it off because we don't do those things like that. It's still in us. And unless it's delivered out of you, counseled out of you, amen, or pulled out of you, you'll continue to make the same mistakes and produce another generation. How many have ever said, you know, I'll never do what my mom or daddy did to me? I'm going to let my kids watch TV all night long <laughs> until, you get, until you have one. And then you understand why your mama did what you did, why your daddy did what you did. Mama had the grace, daddy had the whip. There was no mixing them two up. <laughs> when daddy said it, it was over. There wasn't no two times like y'all do. It amazes me how many times you give your children. Hey, man, I got one chance. That's it, one. His gift made room for him. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. See, uh, see some of y'all don't understand. Y'all call this stuff abuse. That wasn't abuse. That was called discipline. Yeah. And because that, okay, yeah. 
And because that was proper discipline, by the time I was in the fourth grade, all the shenanigans were out of me. See, it started with some of y'all, but out of me, dare not talk back to a teacher. Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? What? My daddy will come to the school. Don't wait to come. No, he coming. He's already ticked off because he had to take off to come see me. The teacher wanted to be dignified and say, take him to the back of the room. He said, no. He gonna get it right now. I'm the jock of the class. I'm, I'm the king of the class and, and I'm getting beat with books and algebra, <laughs> curriculum tools. Who's training you? Who's training you? And that's why you keep moving because you don't want to be trained. You don't want to have accountability. You want to do your own thing. No one you'll give made room for you. Sit down and be taught. Amen. What needs to be taught because something is inside you that got to come out of you because God don't want you to produce another generation with that ism and schism in it. Amen. That game. You got game. Amen. And it needs to be out of you. You want it out of you, but it just keeps coming up at the, at the wrong time. It's in you. Oh. Deliverance is in the house. Deliverance is in. If you desire, if you want it, he'll give it to you. Can I have heads bowed and eyes are closed? Father, I thank you so much, oh God, for just gathering the people here to hear this word, oh God, that will change the, the rest of their life. God, I talked about many things, but the main thing, oh God, talked about how your gift gonna make room for you, and now you got to learn how to operate in it. Once you identify, operate in it. Now, I'll say, be trained and skilled in it so that he can take you to the next level so you can own the whole thing. But before we do that, Lord, there are some things that's in our lives that's holding me back. I, I, Lord, I know what that kink in the hose is. I don't got to look far. I know what that thing is that keeps stopping me from becoming who I'm supposed to be. I should be further along than where I'm at by this time, but I find myself going back to stuff that I should have dominion over. And Lord, I want to be honest right now. I'm here. I want to be honest, Lord. And I want to get that right. I tried to get it right on my own. I just couldn't. But Lord, I heard, oh God, if I just accept you, Lord, I heard if I can just give this to you, you'll take my ashes and you'll turn them into joy. And that's what I want, Lord. I, uh, this heaviness that I'm carrying around, I don't want it no more. So Lord, I want to get it right. If that's you, with heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If that's you, let's raise your hands up and say, Lord, that's me right there. I want this thing out of my life. Thank you for being honest. Father, bless those hands that are up right now. They, they want to be delivered. God, they don't want to take this thing home. They want this thing. They want to be free. They don't want to sleep tonight, God, without, without guilt and shame. Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, that you're delivering those that raise their hand. It's not by their power, nor by their might, but it's by the power, by his power, saith the Lord. While my sister come and assist me, Pastor Raymond, Hands are still bowed. Hands are still bowed right there. I don't want nobody to leave with a spirit of heaviness. The heaviness could have come in anyway, but don't leave with that spirit of heaviness. I got a report yesterday that they said when you gave on Wednesday night, you came down and you pointed to a row and you said there was a heaviness spirit there. She said, you was right. She said, you was right. There was a heaviness there, including mine. But you know what? I didn't take it with me. I left it right there in that row. And I want somebody today to have that same testimony. That heaviness that I brought in today, I'm not going to, I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to take that back. I'm not going to let it get to the parking lot. It will not get into my car. I'm going to leave it right at this altar right now. And as Pastor Raymond comes, he's going to finish this out. I'm going to see you all on Wednesday. Amen. Everybody on Wednesday here. God bless you. Have a safe weekend. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I pray you are inspired to take your life to the next level. Now, I want to hear from you. Leave me a comment and let me know how this blessed you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you will never miss a video. I'll see you next time. God bless you.